So when we're trying to figure out the correct formula for ionic compounds, it's helpful, helpful to remember that ionic compounds are always going to be charge neutral. Meaning that the sum of the charges from the, all the anions and cations have to equal to zero. So the anion charge Uh, plus the cation charge must be equal to zero. So you probably already know uh, that the, of course, the formula for uh, sodium chloride is NaCl meaning that there's one sodium cation for every one chloride anion. That is because, of course, the sodium atom is a plus one, and the chloride anion is a minus one. And so when they form a compound together, they will react in a one-to-one -one ratio so that the overall charge of the ionic compound is zero. We can even think about this from an electron's point of view. We know that the sodium atom has one valence electron, so if we drew the Lewis dot structure, electron dot symbol, it would be, uh, it would look like that. Uh, the chloride atom has seven valence electrons. And so to achieve the octet rule, of course, that sodium atom is going to transfer the, uh, its valence electron, it wants to lose it, to the chloride, which would love to gain it. And, of course, then we form the sodium chloride compound. Sodium has a uh, positive one charge. The chloride, now that just gained a valence electron, has a negative one charge. And so, of course, it reacts in a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, that type of thinking always won't work, especially when we're talking about polyatomic ions. But for uh, simple ionic compounds, we can always think about it in either way. Um, so let's look at, like, uh, take a look at the example for uh, an ionic compound that would form between magnesium and the chloride ion. Magnesium chloride. Okay. We know that uh, magnesium is in group 2, so it's going to lose its two valence electrons to form a plus 2 cation. Uh, chloride is always still going to be minus 1. And so, if uh, we're thinking about uh, in terms of just charge, we know that this has to equal 0. There's a minus 1 here, and a plus 2 over here. Plus 2 plus a minus 1 does not equal 0, and so I have to multiply this negative 1 by 2 to make it equal to 0. So that what means that I need two chlorides to react with the uh, one magnesium. And so the correct formula for magnesium chloride is MAG, MgCl2. Okay. So in terms of electron dot symbols, we could even think about it that way. So magnesium has two valence electrons. All right. Uh, it will uh, transfer one valence electron to one chloride ion. But it still needs to get rid of that other valence electron. And so along comes a second chloride atom to react with it and to accept that electron. And so when the uh, magnesium chloride ionic compound is formed, there will be electrostatic attraction between the chloride ions and the magnesium cation. Okay. 
So another way uh, we can even think about this is a little bit of a trick. Okay, and so if we look at this again, we write out the two charges, magnesium with a plus two and chloride with a minus one. Um, if we remember one caveat, which we'll talk about later, um, if we use the charge of the cation, the metal, and we bring it down to the subscript for the nonmetal, and then the charge for the nonmetal or the anion, and we bring it down to the subscript for the cation, um, that will lead us to the same correct answer. Magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Okay. So let's try that again. Let's try uh, another example and see where that actual last trick fails, okay? So if we think about the uh, formula for the uh, compound magnesium oxide. All right, so we still know well, magnesium is gonna be a ma uh, Mg2 plus, group two, lost its two valence electrons. Oxygen, it is in group 16, or 6A, so it has six valence electrons, so it's going to form a two minus ion, gain two electrons, two, uh, have the same electron configuration as neon, and eight valence electrons. So O2 minus. Okay, if we just tried that uh, trick we just learned, they would tell us that uh, magnesium uh, charge would become the subscript for oxygen. Same thing for the charge of oxygen becomes the subscript of magnesium. And that gives us the symbol or the formula Mg2O2. And it turns out that is not correct. For ionic compounds, the uh, formula must always be the lowest whole number ratio. And if we even think about um, what happens with magnesium, we can see that that's not going to be correct. Two magnesium atoms is not going to react with two oxygen atoms. We've got magnesium with two valence electrons. Oxygen, group 6A, has six valence electrons. Okay. So what's going to happen here is that magnesium is going to transfer both of its valence electrons to oxygen. to form the magnesium plus two cation and the oxide anion with a two negative charge. Both have the octet rule satisfied and we can see that the uh, magnesium and oxygen reacts in a one to one ratio. So the correct formula for magnesium oxide is MgO, not Mg2O2. And so we just have to remember if we do it this way that we always have to boil it down to the lowest whole number ratio. Or of course we can always check the math. We've got a plus two plus a negative two. Does that equal zero? And yes, that is correct. And so magnesium oxide is always the uh, formula for, or MgO is always the uh, formula for magnesium oxide. Now this whole time I have been uh, writing the cation first and then the anion and that is the correct way to write formulas. The cation always goes first. Write cation first. Then anion. Or metal then non-metal is another way to remember it. Okay so magnesium oxide is always MgO it is never O-M-G.